just have a cup of coffee, then I'll go. So welcome back to Coffee Time. It's been a little while, as usual. It's been maybe as much as two weeks. But I know you like this format, and I got a few things to talk about today. First of all, I got a viewer comment that is a which is a typical comment from people who actually haven't really visited or only came for a week or two. In the video where I showed Kalima Shopping Center, uh, he wrote, very impressive, but not what people think about when they think of Colombia. You need to understand something about Colombia. Colombia is a modern country. It really doesn't lack for anything. It's, a, it's not like Ecuador. Ecuador has certain places that are modern. But in general, it's, you know, it's still 30 years behind the times. That's one of the attractions for some people. You know, so you, it's not necessarily a negative. But in Colombia, particularly in the last 10 or 15 years, it has been growing and growing and growing and it's as modern as anywhere. I've mentioned before, Medellin, for example, is one of the most modern cities on this planet. It's beautiful. It has everything going for it, except it's crowded and it's got some pollution. But it's a beautiful place, second to none. Bogota is extremely modern. Even this little place here in Armenia that's smaller than Rochester, New York, You've got tons of high-rise buildings. Porto Candillo Mall is beautiful. It's as nice as any mall anywhere. Uh, Kalima Shopping isn't my favorite. The only thing about Kalima Shopping that I actually like is they have a home center there, which, as I mentioned, is kind of like a Lowe's. It has a little bit of everything. It's got building materials, but lots of appliances. Anything you can think of that you're going to want for your household. So I like that because you're going to find things there that you won't find in most stores. But there's nothing backward about Colombia. Now you can say, aha, but I've been to this town or that town or I've seen all these poor neighborhoods. I just, I have to keep reminding people, there are poor everywhere. Now here's just a few pictures, but think Appalachia in the United States, or think of Detroit, or any city that has sections that look like they've been through war. Every country has its poor. Every country has its rundown, dilapidated buildings. Every country has street people. Every country has homeless people. Colombia is no exception, nor is Ecuador. It doesn't mean it's a poor, backward country. Colombia is not what most people think. Most people think 20, 30, 40 years ago. Most people's view has been shaped by movies. And movies create a storyline. I love movies. I mean, it's one of my favorite things. But they're not reality. I mean, occasionally they are. but. In general, they're really not reality, and the way Colombia is portrayed in TV shows and movies is rarely accurate. So, I understand where the comment came from, but I'm here to tell you that there's nothing backwards at all that I can think of about Colombia. Rich versus poor, <laughs> again, every country. I don't care whether your political bent is socialist, you've got your rich, those are the people in charge. Or if it's capitalist, you've got your rich, those are the people that were entrepreneurs that built their wealth. But you're going to have poor. The true sign, in my opinion, of the health of a country is its middle class. Do you have a middle class? In Cuenca, Ecuador, there was a very strong middle class in Cuenca. Now you go to other places, like the little town I lived in in Hiron, it wasn't so much middle class, it was really kind of poverty. But then again, even though it was only less than 20 miles away from Cuenca, 
it owned everything priced out about half of what it did in Cuenca itself. But again, you didn't have any modern amenities. It was just, you know, 50 years ago, it was pretty much the same. So, you know, here in Colombia, do you have a middle class? Yes, most people are middle class. In these videos, you see, look at the traffic, look at the cars, look at the sheer number of cars and motorcycles that are running around. Who's buying those? Who's driving them? Transportation for private use is off the chain here. And that's one of the problems when you go to a place like Medellin, the traffic is absolutely insane. It's because everybody can afford a car and a motorcycle. Now, there's a strong middle class here. And yes, you're going to have beggars, you're going to have street people. You're going to have that. But where don't you have that? Just keep in mind, there's poor everywhere. The strength of the country is in its middle class. And Colombia has a very, very strong middle class. And it's modern. I want to point out a blog. Now, I started this blog when I, shortly after I moved to Cuenca, Ecuador. So it was over three, about three and a half years ago. And the point, it was before I even started doing these videos, and the point of that blog was to really just kind of put my thoughts down on paper. What was I seeing? What was I feeling? Why was I making certain decisions? Through my life, I've always been kind of an introverted person that kind of keeps things to himself. That's why I hate doing these videos even after all this time. But what I used to do is write a lot. You know, you have a, an emotional breakup or something bad happens. You know, for me it was my therapy. I would sit down and I would write, be it a story, poem, didn't say it was any good. but. That's what I would do. That would be my emotional release. And when I came to Cuenca, Ecuador, after, you know, supposedly I was going to die in the sickness and all the stuff I've talked about, I, I needed some therapy. And my therapy is self-therapy. And so I started that blog, just kind of put my thoughts in order. Except I'm terrible at keeping up with it because... I don't want it to be a chain around my neck. And so as I'm living my life, I go six months and I don't write anything. Why? Because I'm busy with my life. But then I would return to it. Something would happen. I think I really got back into it when I made my first trip to Columbia because there was a lot of emotion in that trip, seeing things that I hadn't seen in a long time, bringing back a lot of memories. And, you know, it kind of spurred me on to write in the blog. So I wrote this six part <laughs> to, to talk about what went on before and compared it to what I was seeing today. So the blog has importance to me, but it's not anything I'm very good at keeping up with. One of the reasons is because the website that was hosting that blog, well, not only was kind of expensive, especially when you're not really using it, but it was difficult to use, and so to get in and use it and do certain things that I was trying to do, it just was time consuming. And the more I got into the videos, that takes a lot of my time as it is, because I'm, you know, <laughs> I mentioned many times, I suck at editing. I'm not good at these videos. We all know that. And, you know, the only reason for any of this and the reason I keep gaining viewers is because the information's good. Don't we all wish it would be far more entertaining? But it consumes a lot of my time. I mean, it's a lot of times it's like a full-time job. And so to also do that with the blog, it's just it was just another obstacle to keep me from using it, where if I could just kind of sit down and write and hit publish or print or whatever, I could do it a lot more often. So I just came to the conclusion with this thing kind of running at idle all this time uh, to cancel the website and save that money because I'm in that mode right now anyway. And to use an alternative source that was going to be easier. So what I've done is I've started using Google, Google Blog. That blogger 
site is free of charge. It's very simple to use. It has enough features for what I've tried to do. So it took me a long time, but I had to transfer the information by hand, page by page, over to the Google blog. So I've got three years worth of blog in there that was really tedious. Now what I wasn't able to transfer was a lot of the photos. But a blog is a blog, and if you want to see pictures, go to the videos. I'll try to, uh, as, I, as I move forward, I'll try to include some photos in it. I just couldn't save some of those. So I've shut down that other website, but if you go to Grand-Columbia, which at one time was Cuenca-Ecuador, but if you go to Grand-Columbia.com, it will redirect you to the Google blog, and you can take a look there. If you go back to the beginning, it, what shows up on the page is the, is the latest one, which is six months ago. But if you, if you go back through that to the very beginning, or on the left side of the page is a search with dates, you can start at the beginning. Now, all modesty aside, some of them are really good. Some not so good. But some are really worth reading and some are really good for information. Now you do have a period in there about the middle where I would do a video and then I would open a blog page and just post the video. I wasn't sure what to do or how to do that. That isn't the way I'm going to operate going forward, although I may put a link to the video. Uh, but I really want the blog to be that personal uh, writing that's really more for me than for anyone else. Now, I did say that I was going to, there's three barrios uh, that I was going to be visiting this week. I think that's going to be put off for a little while. Jojo, who's helped me with the last couple videos, she grew up in this city and except for a few years in Singapore, she's lived here her whole life. She was going to take me to a couple interesting barrios in the south, uh, primarily because some people have asked me about it. And one person who's, although I, we've never met, has become a friend. We've been writing back and forth. He supports the channel. Uh, he always has a kind word to say or a joke to crack. And he asked me about some areas in the south. And, and so I want to do that. I want people that are with me in this venture. I, I really want to help them any way I can. So I want to do that. But she's not feeling very good. Uh, she told me yesterday, we were actually supposed to meet up yesterday and plan it out, and she wasn't able to. She's just not, she's really under the weather, probably going to go see the doctor tomorrow. So that's going to kind of take this next week out of the picture. So we'll look for the week after. Yeah, I could go do it alone, but I don't really know those barrios. I know where they are, I know how to get there, but I won't have the insight. And as you know, if you watch these videos much, you know I try to get local impressions, insight, opinion, so I can share that with you rather than just kind of walk through and guess and be completely wrong. I try to be accurate. So I'm sure we all wish her well. I did get uh, a few questions about who is she. Longtime viewers will know that very often, I make, I make a fair amount of friends, and very often, they will help me or I will include them in a video here or there. Sandy back in Cuenca, Audrey's sister, she was in a whole bunch of videos. She just, we had a lot of fun together. She cracked me up. Uh, she was popular in the videos. She was a very optimistic, bubbly personality. And I enjoyed doing the videos with her. It's a lot more fun when you're doing it with somebody than doing it alone. So Jojo said that she had some time here or there and you know she could help me out so uh, you know that's what that is don't try to read too much into it and yeah I did announce a while back that I'm actively looking for a, a girlfriend uh, someone more than just a week or two uh, but no one's I will share with you when the time comes having friends doesn't equate to that I mean you should be used to that by now if you're not aware, 
please be aware that there is a Facebook group, Adventures in Grand Columbia, and if you're not in it, sign up for it. There will be some things that are not in the video that maybe I don't mention in coffee time that I could just kind of throw up there, but not only that, there's other people in that group and they share experiences, very nice people. We are restrictive as far as there's no trolling, there's no name calling, there's none of the crap that you see in a lot of groups or they're just out of there. And, um, you know, so we have a very clean, friendly, cordial group. You're invited to join. Now, I had a few comments about the last video I did the Kalima Shopping Center because in that video there's really no voice, there's no narration there's only a tiny little section where I asked Jojo where are we all the rest is just some music and some people hate that 14 minutes of just watching video walking through a mall and you know what I understand that I don't do those very often, but that is a type that I do because I have a lot of people that ask me. The people that are interested are the people that are thinking about coming and they're trying to place themselves. What would it be like if I were there? And so once in a while, I'll do just kind of a walk through like that. Commentary, well, might be nice. It could be distracting for the people that are looking for that. They can see what's going on. They can take a look. And again, we get, can you price? I, I will not price everything out as I go along. It's tedious. I would hate it. It's not that meaningful. In general, I, as we go, I give prices. And if you watch these videos on a regular basis, you get a pretty good sense. But I'll tell you this, in Colombia, Whatever it costs you in the United States, it's between one-third and one-quarter of the cost here in Armenia, Colombia. Good rule of thumb. Some things, no. Some things are one-to-one, -one, maybe a little bit more. But for the most part, your daily living, it's going to be about 25% of what you pay there. Maybe 33%. So pricing out every little thing, I, I really have no interest. I understand the desire to want to know that. It would drive me nuts. So I will just continue including certain things as we go that I think are important enough to be of interest. But I, I, I don't want these videos to be a pricing guide. The point of that particular video was just to get a sense of walking through the mall through the grocery store and through the home center. You can just kind of see some of the things that are on offer and get a sense of it. That was the entire point of it. And occasionally I do those videos. The thing about my videos is you have to take them in totality. If you step in and you see one here and one there and one there, there's gonna be a ton of stuff that you're not seeing. If you watch them as they come out, that knowledge base builds and grows. And even by now, if you've been watching from the beginning, you got a really good sense. You have enough information to probably know more than some people that live in a certain place. So I can't cram it all into one video and I do different style videos, mostly because of what people ask of me. So that walkthrough video bores me to tears. So I feel your pain. I feel your pain. However, I only do a handful of those a year. I don't do very many. So if you don't like it, just move on. I got a bunch of thumbs down on that video. I mean, I mean, come on, really? I Last thing I want to point out on that particular video, it goes through other things that I do. Columbia, businesses are very sensitive about having videos done, or photos, but more so videos. For example, in the museum, which I'm going to talk about in a minute, photos are okay, videos are not. Don't ask me what the difference is, but that's just the way it is. When you go into a mall 
um, Exodo. I went into Exodo one time and I'm trying to do a video and, uh, you know, accosted by a guard and it wasn't, I hadn't gone much farther and another guard, you know, grabbed me and I didn't have a big camera or anything. They just saw my uh, cell phone and said, no, no videos here. No, no, no video. It's, it, and they'll toss you out. I mean, you're not going to get arrested or anything, but they don't want videos. And uh, it, it, for whatever reason, cultural thing, I don't know, security. They are security sensitive here. So as I was walking through Kalima, I was trying to be as covert as possible. I didn't want them to know because I knew that if they realized I was doing video, they would make me stop. It's hit and miss. It's something I run into on a regular basis. And I ran into it in Cuenca sometimes too, but, but here more so. So keep that in mind too. Why didn't I show more price tags? And I didn't show more price tags because you notice I wasn't really lingering anywhere. I'm trying to keep moving so I can keep the video going and not have somebody come up, tap me on the shoulder and say, turn that video off. Last thing today, the Gold Museum. A couple of videos ago, I did the Gold Museum. Really disappointed. I've wanted to go there for years. Now I realize that that Gold Museum is nothing like the one in Bogota. But what I like about that Gold Museum, although I've never been there, I've only been able to read about it, but it's gold from this particular community, the, the Kimbaya indigenous people that go back a few thousand years. And it was the, it had the artwork of those particular people. So it's really a regional museum. And there's the second most gold in the world comes out of Colombia. It, it's a big gold producer, emeralds, big emerald producer. Gold goes back a long, long time. I mean, the Spanish love this place, right? Because they love their gold. So this artwork is artwork that managed to escape the Spanish, so it didn't get melted down into coins and bars. And I was really excited to see it. I did a lot of preparation. I did a lot of research. I have wanted to go there for a long time. I was so disappointed that they had just shut it down. I know there were people just recently, last month, that were in there. So I go and they had just shut the thing down. They not only had shut it down, but they cleaned all the gold out. It was gone. There was two large rooms that was full of this gold. Now I can go to Bogota and I'm going to see all kinds of stuff, but I wanted to see this one. I am partial to this area, I'm partial to the history here. I wanted to see it and I couldn't see it and I couldn't show you. It was a huge disappointment. I thought about just throwing it away. You know, why make a video over nothing? I, it felt like the Seinfeld episode. I made a video about nothing. But the grounds are beautiful and you know, we went through the trouble of doing it. Everything's not going to be great. So I did the Geraldo Rivera Al Capone vault in Chicago video where when we finally opened it, there was nothing there. So on that disappointing note, that's it for coffee time on this Sunday. I'll see you soon.